Hey folks, it's St. Patrick's Day so I thought I'd wear a bit of green, got my green man shirt on for the occasion. Uh, even though I'm an Englishman, I can still get with the uh, brethren across the Irish Sea. I thought I'd do a quick video on uh, folk instrument finds and restorations. Uh, I would have um, shot some video on all these projects but um, I did these restorations before I decided to start a YouTube channel so um, you'll see them sort of in the finished state but I like to comb and scour <laughs> the world uh, and keep my eyes open for any kind of folk string instrument um, I've had um, just about anything I can think of um, on my workbench and uh, every time I find something it's a, a research project um, and uh, a great learning curve um, to set them up and get them to sound and uh, if I really like them I keep them if um, you know I think I, I can find better ones or when I do find better ones I move them on so I'm sure some of you do the same thing here's an example the first one is a mountain dulcimer and this is the one I currently keep on my wall. Um, no brand. Um, really nice all wood, very light. Uh, so it's it's graduated very well, which is the reason why I, I keep it. Um, and uh, it just has a really nice sound. Can't really play it close to my chest like that, but it's got a, you know, a very nice resonant sound. It sounds better than uh, any of the other ones I've had. Every time I see these, I pick them up uh, in all kinds of conditions. Uh, this one I just thought had a nicer design. Uh, I like the wood. Um, it's very very resonant. Um, so this is the one I kept, and I, I sold all the others. But you find them at. at uh, thrift and jumble shops um, you know sometimes they're very very cheap and you have to buy strings and um, uh, maybe do some gluing and set them up but uh, it's always nice to have a, a mountain dulcimer uh, the next on the list is uh, something a bit more rare and this is a bowed psaltery and uh, this one here has got the beautiful rosette it's a, a nice hardwood um, I think it's pear wood, this particular model, and of course this one uh, you play uh, like with a bow like this. And uh, these often come with cracked tops, um, so you might have to seal uh, or glue a top, sometimes the um, tuning pins are loose. Often they'll come with incomplete strings and you have to find somebody who carries a, a full set. This is a chromatic one so you've got the flats and sharps on this side and uh, I've noticed that people play these with two bows now to get the, the chordal work or the, uh, um, you know, the sort of uh, uh, counterpoint with two voices going on with these things. Uh, you can look up these on, on videos. Fun instruments to play. Um, I'm always on the lookout for these. Um, the third one is even more rare and this is a, a lyre. This is an Anglo-Saxon uh, style lyre. Um, the same kind that was found in the Sutton Hoo um, dig in uh, Britain in recent times. So we know now that this, this is the style from the Anglo-Saxon period. And uh, these are just uh, uh, very instructive instruments because they're so minimal. You've only got on this one uh, seven strings. And so you have to um, theoretically uh, be a lot more aware of what you're playing because you're, you're so limited. It's a great instrument for uh, uh, composing or uh, music theory. Um, you can pluck them like this. You 
could do chords. Or what they call blocking with your, your other hand to make chords. Now this one was actually in the trash or in, in, in the rubbish bin uh, and it's a, a hardwood um, with a veneer top. Uh, it looks to me like perhaps ash on the top uh, and it's got a softer wood on the back. And this whole piece here was completely destroyed. I had to uh, re reconstitute that and also um, fill in the holes and uh, re redo the pegs or the, the tuning uh, bits on the top um, which of course I learned from doing uh, uh, violin um, scrolls and, and pegs uh, it's the same technique you have to fill the hole and re-drill re um, and I managed to get it back together and it's a, it's a lot of fun to play I really like these uh, and there are various styles of lyre that you can find. Uh, but these are my favorites so far. I just think you can do more with them. Um, and I, I, I like the design, I like the way they're made. Uh, so far on any of these instruments I've shown you, um, there are no indications of maker. So these are really folk crafted instruments, uh, perhaps by somebody who makes just a handful of them. Um, the last one I wanted to show you is definitely from Germany. And um, it was sold to me, or at least the person who sold it uh, was convinced that it's a lute. It's not a lute. I have a lute. I've done a restoration on a lute that I found. Um, this is a lute guitar. And of course it has the uh, uh, straight up headstock. A lute would have the uh, 90 degree uh, bend on the peg head there. Um, and a, a lot more strings with uh, gut fretting. This is uh, a metal fretted. Looks like uh, fairly cheap brass frets. Uh, and then of course you have the uh, ebony body frets uh, right here. Uh, most of which I had to cut and replace because they were missing. Um, this one, the whole top was uh, basically destroyed and you can see uh, maybe if it focuses there are some cracks that have been cleated uh, and glued. I had to take out the the ornamental rosette to get inside to do that uh, and then I had to uh, actually um, glue this rosette, black rosette back together um, because it was damaged and the the back uh, which is a, a bowl back um, beautifully made uh, with I think walnut um, and the, this, these were all apart, so I had to glue uh, a lot of these together. Uh, and it comes out to be a very nice uh, instrument, which I down tune uh, because it sounds better, uh, slightly lower. find stuff like this and um, sometimes you get it uh, cheap because it's quite wrecked but with some time and patience you can really put them back together and, and make wonderful instruments out of them. By the way this one uh, the top was completely redone. I uh, used shellac and French polished it to um, get back what I presume to be would have been the original finish um, when I got it, um, the top was completely destroyed uh, and very uneven, um, stained, uh, patchy. Uh, and I even decaled or, or detailed the uh, 
uh, you can't really see there, but around the black rosette, um, I detailed the uh, carving. And then of course at the top, uh, if you can see that, um, you know, I put in a ebony piece. Um, you can't really see in the camera. Little details like that, trying to get it back to how it might have originally, uh, originally looked. Um, Luke Guitar, German. Uh, I've heard a rumor that Hitler banned these uh, back in the day. Uh, considered subversive, perhaps. Maybe somebody's got some background on that. Uh, but lovely instrument. I love to play it. Looks great on the wall. And uh, so there's four examples of folk instruments that uh, came to me in tatters, and I managed to put them back together, and they they play beautifully. I use them in my recordings. Um, uh, so keep your eye out. You never know what you can find when with a bit of work you'll uh, find yourself some treasures. See you next time.